Amen. We ask that you would turn in your Bible to the Gospel of John, chapter number 19. Our focus will be verse 10 and 11. John 19, verse 10 and 11. Our theme for this year is power belongs to God. John chapter 19, verse 10 reads, Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivereth me unto thee hath the greater sin. We like to preach from this thought today, church, the power of God to rule over and to overrule. Amen. Hypocrisy, corruption, socially, politically, and religiously, injustice, criminal released who was guilty, an angry mob. This is the condition of the time in which we find Jesus in John chapter 19. It actually extends back into chapter 18. For we find that it was in chapter 18 that Jesus was taken from Gethsemane, where he had been in prayer unto his father. A band of persons, uh, captains and officers, dispatched by the religious leaders, had gone to the garden to arrest him. He was arrested and taken to Annas, the former high priest, then to Caiaphas, the sitting high priest who happened to be the son-in-law to Annas, before the Sanhedrin, and then to Pilate. Uh, Pilate, in examining Jesus, inquired as to what the charge was against him. Three times, Pilate himself declared that he found no fault in Jesus. Let me reiterate that. Three times Pilate, the Roman governor, examines the charges that have been brought against Jesus by the religious leaders, the social leaders, the political leaders that... Jesus was guilty of crime that was worthy for him to be put to death. And yet, here was Pilate, the ungodly Roman governor, who assessed the situation and on three occasions declared that he found no fault in Jesus Christ. Well... The text then that we have before us, Pilate has gone back to Jesus to inquire one last time because the Jews, while they initially began with one charge, have now changed the charge that they bring against Jesus Christ. He made himself to be the Son of God. Verse number 8 of chapter 19 says this, When Pilate heard that he was the more afraid. Well, he then goes in verse number 9, he goes into the judgment hall and begins once again to inquire of Jesus. Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Well, The verse number 10 of our text then brings us to an important point. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Let's just take that for a moment, church. Pilate, though he has declared three times 
that he finds no fault in Jesus. Now, when Jesus does not respond to his inquiry, Pilate asked the question, Speakest thou not unto me? Clearly, Pilate seems to feel now insulted. Pilate now seems that he, his attitude has changed. Well, why would that happen? The next part of the verse helps us to then frame and understand what may be going on. When Pilate asked the question of Jesus, why aren't you answering me? It is an indication of the fact that men of earthly power tend to allow their earthly power to be that which they trust in. They trust in their own power. They trust in themselves. And they don't mind reminding you of what power they think they have over you. The second part of verse number 10 clearly says, Pilate then poses the question to Jesus, Knoweth thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Pilate seems to be saying to Jesus, that uh, he, Pilate, is in a position over Jesus. Yes, Pilate sees himself as the Roman governor, the representative of the state, if you will, the government, that he has power and authority. Well, Pilate happens to then not be a good student of history. For if Pilate had been a good student of history, he would have remembered that there was once upon a time when Egypt was the world power and the pharaohs of Egypt were large and in charge. He would have remembered that there was a time when the Assyrian Empire ruled the world, Sennacherib, leading the Assyrian Empire. Uh, Pilate should have remembered his history, that there was a day when the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar ran roughshod over the earth. If he had known and remembered his history, he would have remembered that the Medo-Persian Empire under Xerxes had been the superpower of their day. He would have remembered that, yes, the Grecians under Alexander had become a dominant world power. He would have remembered that Carthage under Hannibal had one day been a world power. His history would have and should have reminded him that no matter what power would have been in the world at that day and time, that their power was temporary. Well, the Romans are now in charge, the Caesar in Rome, and they have now control over the physical territory in which Jesus lives. And yet the scripture declares that the earth belongs to the Lord and everything that dwells therein. But here it is, a mere man is declaring his power over Jesus. Well, just as Pharaoh was not a student of history. America must pause and make sure that it does not make the same mistake. Our nation, for all of its military power and for all of its economic power, 
must understand and realize that ultimate power belongs to God. Earthly power is no match for heavenly power. Here it is, Pilate is declaring what he believes to be his power and his authority. But Jesus sets the record straight. Jesus says to Pilate that uh, whatever power that he does exercise, God has allowed him to exercise. Yes, God is in ultimate control. Jesus said, thou could have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Yes, power belongs to God. In this statement that Jesus makes, that God above has power. It lets us know that God has the power to rule, to rule over, and to overrule. Yes, all men are subject to God. God is the ultimate ruler. It is God to whom we should keep our focus, just as Jesus did in helping Pilate to understand. All of what was going on, Jesus being arrested, Jesus being unjustly accused, Jesus ultimately preparing to be crucified on the cross. Yes, all of this was in accordance with God who rules over mankind. God had already determined when we go back to the garden, when God established creation and humanity, that when man disobeyed God, it was the enemy, Satan, who showed up in the garden. And after God had given man all of what he had given man with only one restriction, do not touch the tree in the midst of or the garden. Well, the enemy showed up and tried to convince the man and the woman that they could have power greater than God. You remember what he said? Well, God has told you to not touch that tree, but God knows that in the day that you do, that you will be like God. God had told them to be obedient, to leave it alone. And yet the enemy showed up to try to entice them to operate in power outside of God. Yes, it began in the garden. But now here in chapter number 19 of John, we see that Jesus declares this, that the great power is from above. The greatest power is from God. And that God is in control. God has the ability. God has the authority to rule over man. Amen. Have I witnessed to that church? No matter what an individual man in America ought to hear this today, no matter what an individual man may think his power to be. Power belongs to God, and God rules over. Yes, when we say God has the power to rule over, the question that one will ask is this. Well, then why does God permit things to happen that we clearly in our minds understand that are not consistent with God's purpose or God's plan. Well, God allows every man to make his own choices. God gives every man the ability to decide, decide to do right or decide to do wrong. But God gives us 
the opportunity to make the decision. Now, whatever decision one will make, ultimately God will have the final say. Amen, church. So we can know for sure that no matter what happens, God is in control. Men may think that they are in control for now, but one thing is for certain, man that is born of a woman one day is going to die. Yes, death will claim every man, and yet it is through God who rules over man that God sent his son into the world that we might have the opportunity for eternal life. Yes, God is the one who rules over humanity. But not only does God rule over humanity, but God can overrule humanity. Yes, there are times when men become intoxicated with their power. As Pilate says here, he had power to then either crucify or release Jesus. But Jesus puts it on record. No, God has the ultimate power, and God has the power to overrule. In this instance, though God allows Jesus Christ to go to the cross. So the question that you have today is that why did not God overrule all those corrupt men who had unjustly brought Jesus before Pilate? Why did God not overrule Pilate himself and allow Jesus to be taken to the cross? Well, it is because of another aspect of God's power, and that's God's power to love. Jesus said it this way, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Yes, God, who rules over humanity, allowed sinful men to make decisions that ultimately took Jesus to the cross. But what they did not know is that they were fulfilling God's ultimate plan. Yes, God could have overruled them, but if God had overruled them, you and I would be lost in sin. We would have no God on our side and no heaven in our view. But thanks be unto God, the God who rules over and who can overrule allow Jesus to be taken to the cross and crucified for our sins. Can somebody say, thank you, Lord, that he went to the cross for our sins? Yes, he got up out the grave in three days and declared all power in his hand. Now those who identify with him as being Lord and Savior, when the enemy does now come against you, God will overrule the enemy. Whatever God has said, whatever God has decreed, it shall come to pass. And when you put your life in the hand of the Lord, yes, there will be trouble in life. Yes, there will be trials of life. But God ultimately will overrule because when he gives eternal life, to those who will put their trust in him. God demonstrates that power belongs to him. Can you clap your hand today and say, thank you, Lord. Whatever I'm going through, power belongs to you. Thank you, Lord. Whatever trial I am facing, power belongs to you. Thank you, Lord, that you have the power to rule over and to overrule. Thank you, Lord. Have our witness today that somebody can say glory and can anybody shout hallelujah. Can you look back over your life despite all of how many years you've been alive? All of us can have the same testimony today. Thank you, God, for your power to rule over me. Thank you, God, for your power to overrule. 
thank you, Lord, that nobody on earth has any power, that you, Lord, you are greater. For your word declares, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yes, there are some disturbing things that are going on around us. Yes, there are some darkness that is abounding around us. But we are going to be light in the midst of darkness. Why? Because God rules over us. And God has the power to overrule. Jesus told Pilate, you don't have any power. And I declare to any man that is not walking in God's purpose, that man does not have any ultimate power. Jesus said this, do not fear those who can just destroy your body, but your fear and your reverence needs to be in the one who can destroy your body and then cast your soul into a burning hell. Yes, power belongs to the Lord. Can you help me today, church? Somebody say power belongs to the Lord. He's got power to save. He's got power he can heal. He's got power he will keep us. Yes, power belongs to God. May God bless you and God keep you as I prayer.